Hello and welcome to Making Sense of Automated Tiering. I'm George Crump, Chief Steward at Storage Switzerland, and I'll be your host for this presentation. Uh, today's presentation is sponsored by F5 Networks. So just a quick agenda here. Uh, first we're going to do a little background on Storage Switzerland, who we are and then we'll get into some of the details of automated tiering and where and how you might want to do that and then as well as some uh, details about one that we're particularly interested in file virtualization and then we'll wrap things up. So first up though let's talk about Storage Switzerland. Uh, we're an analyst firm focused on the storage, server virtualization and cloud markets. We gain knowledge of these markets uh, through testing labs, interviews with end users uh, as well as decades of real-world experience. We take th that information, uh, the findings, and uh, make recommendations that appear in our articles, white papers, screencasts. Uh, most of those will appear on our website at www.storage-switzerland.com. And then we also have uh, various blogging responsibilities and articles that we write for Information Week, Network Computing, Search Storage, and other uh, industry publications. Uh, finally, we're available to uh, for free consultation to end users. We like uh, we like to talk to end users about what your challenges are, and we'd be glad to uh, work with you later. Uh, there's some information at the end of the presentation uh, as to how to contact us. So there's been a lot of buzz lately around automated tiering. What what what's it all about? Well, what one of the things that's driving this is that there are more storage tiers than there's ever been. We've got solid state disk, we've got fiber slash SAS, we've got SADA, and now we've even got cloud storage. So we've got this multiple layer uh, of, of storage tiers uh, that we're trying to figure out how to take advantage of. And, and the uh, ability to manage, manage and monitor uh, all that is, is becoming challenging. Secondly, unstructured data has moved into being really the problem. In the mid-90s, uh, we were very focused on databases, and we had SAP rollouts, and how many Oracle um, uh, instances did we have, and things like that. Uh, now we're talking about just millions and millions of files. Uh, again, in the 90s, we were looking for customers, uh, we, and we were concerned when they might have a million files that we have to back up. There are many customers that we work with now that are dealing with a billion files to back up, and all of that uh, has impact. Secondly, uh, it, it's be or third, it's become a problem because most major manufacturers, uh, along with some interesting startups, have announced or are shipping something in the automated tiering uh, space. So there's just a lot of uh, talk and conversation go about that. So our goal today is to educate you on what automated tiering is and, and what some of the approaches might be to um, implementing it, as well as uh, when and where to use it. So first off, let's just uh, attempt to define uh, what automated tiering is. It, it, it is a, quite simply the movement of data, typically from one class of storage to another, without direct human intervention, meaning instead of you having to decide what data should go where, the system has some sort of intelligence built into it uh, to make those moves. So you can see here in the picture we've got as an example solid state disk, fiber, SADA, and then cloud storage. Uh, and then we'll move uh, data based on uh, access patterns and things like that between these different tiers. Uh, it, it can be a downward migration, so for example from fiber to SADA to cloud. Uh, and I think we'll see uh, obviously a lot of that and, and that's sort of if you think of tiering in general that's always been the traditional approach hasn't it to move data to a less expensive tier of storage but really one of the interesting things about uh, automated tiering is it can be an upward migration from fiber to solid state disk as an example and, and so some vendors are actually using the technology to uh, leverage solid state disk better than we've been able to do in the past. So that's really kind of a, a, a very high level definition of it. So uh, the next question is why do we need automated tiering? Um, well primarily is, is we've got these sort of factors uh, going at us. Number one, IT has less time than it ever has. Uh, capacity is growing exponentially. Uh, manual tracking of data is just too slow. We, we've got to move things around faster than we can. Uh, and, and as I said before, we just have more storage types than we've ever had before. So that combination 
has really led to a need to, to manage these uh, tiers of storage in a much more automated fashion. Uh, and finally, the, the, the situation is just too serious to ignore. Uh, and, and unfortunately, the track record shows that the job won't get done manually. Uh, IT administrators uh, don't have more time than they've ever had. They're stretched thinner than they have ever have been. And so loading them up with one more tier of storage to manage and move data to is just uh, too much to ask. Um, beyond that, there's just too many dollars invested in solid state disk to have it underutilized. One of the things that we always talk about is if you have solid state disk, you want it full. And when you're paying, you know, 15x for the capacity, you, you don't want any wasted space there. So you want it very active and always have it. Um, secondly, there's just too much old data on primary storage to leave it there. It, it, it just, uh, you're spending extra, uh, you're not accessing it, and so getting it off of primary storage might be a good idea. Uh, third, there's, there's too much risk if the wrong data is stored, for example, in archive uh, where you needed it uh, quicker. So we need to make sure we put the right stuff in the right tier at the right time. In summary, there's just too much data, there's too many storage platforms, and there's too many uh, people, as in users and business line managers, involved to rely really on a manual process. So going further, uh, I, automated tiering addresses several IT challenges uh, that the IT uh, folks are faced with. Number one, the, the migration of stale data off of higher tiers of storage. So get, again, freeing up that primary storage and especially freeing up solid state disk. Second, leveraging solid state disk to move data into it quicker and again, move data out of it quicker. We, we want solid state disk to be as full as possible, but we also want it to be freed up as fast as possible as well. Uh, we don't want stale data on solid state disk, uh, certainly any more than we want it on fiber. Um, it, third, it allows us to support uh, an archive tier to reduce backups. One of the problems with backup technologies are just too much data moving across the network uh, that, that is uh, identical to what was already moved across the network before. So that's a, another factor. Um, fourth, there's, there's issues always, of course, with uh, new storage system integration. That includes uh, upgrades and all that sort of day-to-day uh, -day stuff that IT people have to deal with. So uh, getting um, that better leverage and, and allowing new systems to come into the in data center without a Herculean task of integrating them is something that automated tiering can really address, and, and we'll talk about that further. Uh, also, extending the life of an existing system. If you're running against a performance wall, uh, that's something that you can address through uh, automated tiering. Simply putting, for example, an SSD tier in and uh, moving the very active data up to it automatically or, or conversely, uh, freeing up primary storage by putting in a uh, maybe a, a capacity-optimized, deduplicated archive tier and moving data down to it. Finally, leveraging green technology or cloud to re reduce power and cooling costs. So again, deduplicated or, or made-based storage uh, that we can move older data that we know is not going to be accessed because the automated tiering system will figure that out for us and move it either to a made-based system that can power down and spin down drives or to the cloud where it you know essentially is somebody else's responsibility to manage and power and cool. So that's part one uh, of our uh, automated tiering thing and, and we've discussed you know, what it is um, and why do you need it. Uh, in the next uh, part in, in this series, we'll talk about uh, ways that you might want to implement auto tiering. So again, thank you very much for your time today, and we will uh, look forward to having you on part two of the screencast.